Big Dupes, Sporty Thieves. First and foremost, the first rap song I ever heard was um, Run DMC, Suck MCs. Had to be maybe like seven or eight years old. And um, instantly I knew that was just something I wanted to do. Once I heard that song, it was like, wow. Um, I had cousins in Mount Vernon that, um, you know, being that young, I would go to my cousin's house. They had DJ equipment, you know, which was intriguing, inspiring. Um, and it was just something as, as far as my surrounding went. Um, you know, you had kids break dancing. Everybody was wearing the windbreaker suits and had the cardboard boxes and stuff like that. You know, just the whole culture within itself, seeing it from, from that standpoint, the, you know, uh, late 80s early 80s, late 80s, it was inspiring. It was something that, you know, I wanted to be a part of. It was something that a lot of kids um, from around my way, you know, wanted to be a part of. It was a, it was a great movement. It was a great time, music. Music back in the late 80s, early 90s, was a great time for hip hop rap because it was so diverse. It was extremely diverse. You had West Coast, you had East Coast, you had gangster, you had the native tongues, you had, you know what I mean? It was so much going on. You had, um, you had, uh, artists like Queen Latifah, you know, who, artists like that we don't see anymore. You see, you see, everything is one sided now to where it's back in the late 80s, early 90s. It was very diverse. It was an open market. I mean, granted, a lot of artists weren't flourishing and eating. Um, and they weren't they weren't as big as a as a financial standpoint as you know towards the late '90s and early 2000s, but everyone was doing it for the love of the music. They were enjoying creating good music. It, it wasn't no set format. It wasn't no set. Everyone has to talk about one thing, which is you know is common now, in a lot of music. So that's what I, I really appreciate about music back then. For me, hip hop is like that's like my my everything is my my girl, my man, my peoples. It's a it's a great it's a great um it's a great release. It's a great release. Um to be able to create, to be able to um write down and express exactly what you you know, what you feeling or what you you know, what you wanna say. Um and then on on the flip side of that, for people to hear it and then appreciate it. It's a great feeling. Oh man, when I first started listening to rap music, my mom didn't understand it. She told me rap was going to make me stupid. She said the continuous beat is going to make you stupid. It's not good for your brain. <laughs> and uh, obviously all of that changed when I came home with a record deal. You know, it's like I'm, I'm, I'm not that stupid now. You know, it's not going to make me stupid now. It's, it's making me something. But um, she, my, my mom wasn't with it. She wasn't with it. You know, she didn't she didn't totally discourage it. Um, if that's something you want to do, cool. You know, you need to stay in school. You need to get an education. That's something that you could definitely fall back on. The music is not going to be, you know what I mean? Something that you could fall back on. So inspiration comes mostly from within. Because if, if uh, you would be able to hear from me, I would be able to hear certain artists and certain people come out and it'd be inspiring. Um, now, uh, it's, it's far and few artists that I listen to that inspire me to want to create. Um, I find myself constantly um, delving back into, you know, the, 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 the late 90s, you know what I mean, early 90s, late 80s type of, type of rap that's, you know, like, damn, this, this is what needs to be, you know what I mean, still heard. And it's, it's, I know it's still a market and a lane for it. And, you know, that's what helps me. One of the biggest challenges uh, Sporty Thieves over, overcame is that um, I can't say it, it felt like no one wanted us to win. It felt like we, we, we met a lot of different obstacles and roadblocks. And the beautiful thing is good music is good music. And we were able to really break through that and, and, and outshine everything. And that was a, that was a, it was a great accomplishment for us because it was just us. We didn't have, um, uh, back in that time, you know, you had a lot of cliques and crews and, you know, people coming up and, you know, different people's affiliations helped them out, this, that, and the third. We didn't have any of that. 
we didn't have a hot name producer. I mean, we had Ski, who was, you know, under Jay-Z, the standard third, but, you know, a lot of people had different cosigns. We didn't have any cosign. We just had us. One of our greatest memories, um, especially with Brando, it's, it's funny because it's both, it's both memories in one. Uh, uh, I don't know if it was a summer jam. I really can't remember what it was, uh, but we were performing in the Staples Center. And um, I don't even know how many thousands, you know what I mean? I don't even know how many thousands of people it was, maybe 12, 14, I don't know. Um, Brand looked up at the uh, Jumbotron and seen himself up there. What did he do? What he start doing? Push ups, Kurt? <laughs> He looked up and seen himself on a jumbotron, and, and you know it was a great feeling. It was a great moment. We were rocking. It was a it was a great peak, and just to see Brand look up and his face lit up like, oh shit! It, I guess his nerves. He didn't know what to do. Brand started doing push-ups in the middle of the set, um, but that was a great time for us because, like I said, it was like a summer jam, whatever joint. It was a whole lot of artists on the bill. Outkast, uh, I think Monica, and you know it was like you know. It was a it was a big uh, it was a big event and a big deal for us because it was it was an accomplishment. It felt like we made it. We you know what I mean? We were somewhere. Uh, we were definitely recognized and stuff like that. So that was a that was a big point. Those guys were creative. Um, for 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 real sporty D fans that listen to street cinema under, understand that we were pushing the envelope for something. We were trying to um, and we did make some groundbreaking music. Um, the the problem with us, we were on a label that are good at um, nurturing a certain type of artist. Uh, we would have been great at Def Jam, you know. We were on a great label um, of Rock and Block Columbia, um, but even even you know like Columbia Roughhouse, they 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 Nas is is probably the only the ones that uh they were able to nurture. They had DMX. You know what I'm saying? They had different artists. And um, I just think for what we were trying to do at the time, how original and how creative it was, they didn't know what to do with it. To where as a label, a label like Def Jam were, uh, were, were good at signing artists that had that, spe you know, had something, a, a particular niche, and they were able to harness that. But um, what, I, what I want people to understand is that we did it. We did what we wanted to do. We were original and creative, and we made it, which a lot of artists, especially now, are scared to do. Everyone is, everyone is, if everyone is so caught in one format. Um, I just put on my Instagram the other day, you know, fellow New York artists, you making South Records to get a record deal. Why would a record label sign you? And you making South Records where they could just go sign a, sign a South artist. You know, there's no more originality. Everyone is so concerned with following a format, which ties into everyone's concern with making a dollar and not making good music, good original music. And um, one thing that people could say about Sporty Thieves is we didn't follow anyone or any format. We did what we wanted to do, uh, produce what we wanted to produce, rhyme what we wanted to rhyme to. And, um, you know, that's what it was. That's our legacy.